Ime mu je Charlie in ne, ni avtonomno vozilo. Čeprav bi verjetno glede na to, da smo na poligonu pričakovali, da bomo udarili s čim takim. Ampak dejstvo je to, tudi ta avtomobil je zelo, zelo povezan z avtonomno vožno. In danes res postaja očitno, da avtonomna vožna res ni tako zelo, zelo blizu. Danes vse bolj postaja očitno, da se morajo avtomobili res naučiti še zelo, zelo veliko takšnih podrobnosti, ki jih mi kot običajni vozniki nekako znamo na cesti videti, dojeti, razumeti in potem tudi na nje reagirati. No, avtomobile moramo vse to še naučiti. No in Charlie je tisti, ki zna veliko tega, kar mi kot običajni vozniki sami znamo prepoznati, tudi sam zaznati in predvsem povedati naprej. Can you give me some examples? What can you offer to the car manufacturers? We are able to estimate what are the road conditions. Are you driving on a dry surface, a wet surface? What's the level of grip the tire is able to produce if it's a rainy day? But we can see if it's wet or dry. Good question. You know, as humans, we have those extra abilities. As we think of the future when there's no human behind the wheel, you have to give the car this intelligence. So the intent here is A, to help the future autonomous cars, but even with humans, you know, we all are prone to error. Zagotovo se zdaj sprašujete, kakšna je uporabna vrednost tega podatka? How massive can be an improvement with your sideline? One good example which comes out of the um, more of the autonomous space, so um, where we are looking into improving um, ABS stopping distances. So in some internal tests, we were able to improve the stopping distance by around 30%, which is massive, just by informing the anti-lock brake system to brake at a certain moment. So hold yourself, we're going to brake just right after the darker asphalt area there. <clears throat> okay, so if you look at the screen you see, so that's the actual deceleration being measured and that was our estimation, so you see how well they, they line up together. Now we'll do the same thing on the, um, on the wet lane. Okay, you see of course a drop going from dry to wet. So you can imagine if you would have your ABS system that has a fixed value of, of this dry potential, right? You would, you would have a much longer stopping distance. Ali je podlaga suha ali spolska, to današnji napredni avtomobili že znajo ugotoviti. Ali s kamerami na vetrobranskem steklu ali pa z mikrofoni v blatnikih. Ampak gomari to izmerijo na samem izvoru, senzorem v gumi. As a tyre company, as a tyre manufacturer, we are at a very unique point where we actually are sensing the road. The cameras are looking at the road, but we physically are sensing what's happening at the contact area. So, you know, we don't think cameras are competing technology. We believe we can be complementary because it's all about giving the car that extra intelligence. Ta fizični stik avta s cesto, ta neposredni dotik, pa lahko preveri tudi kakovost ceste. We want to show you surface state uh, estimator. Is it a smooth road? Is it a deteriorated road, right? Is it, is it rough? Is it uh, eroded potholes, etc.? It has impacts on your wear of your tire. It has impacts on the grip potential, etc. Now, how does it work? Um, it actually looks at the um, accumulation of energy that we get uh, based on the um, signals of the, of the vehicle and the sensors here in the tire. Uneven roads coming up and you'll see how quickly that the, uh, the car is picking it up. The algorithm is changing into deteriorated roads. So we go to some rough surfaces here, see that energy level changing. Now we go onto a real uh, uneven road and you'll see that, that energy level going up and you see the classification changing. As the tire is rolling and as you're driving, it's sensing how much energy or accelerations the tire is experiencing. And we translate that then into the stress levels. So, you know, if you drive through a, a road where there are more potholes or where it's rough, the vibration sensor in the tire is able to pick up that information and then the algorithm is able to decide how severe the road conditions are. These are some kind of piezo? Uh... Yes, actually you're right. It's very close to a piezo sensor 
uh, where essentially, yes, you can monitor how much, uh, you know, the vibrations or the acceleration level. Aha, so the movement is transformed into electrics. Yes, that is Aha. correct. Mirjene udarcu ceste je koristno tudi na sploh, za vse udeležence v prometu. We are also talking about car to x technology and car to car technologies as well. So we can send this data anywhere. Ultimately, that's the purpose, yeah, to have that data communicated to everyone, right? Um, if we are able to detect aquaplaning with a certain vehicle because the tire slip changes, if you can communicate that to all the following vehicles, um, it's really a safety-related um, feature that um, brings value to, to, to everyone then, yeah. To the sensor, krati tudi veliki brat. In this case, the car is able to inform the customer on a regular basis how much more mileage the tires have left. Because you know, every time you hit a pothole, it does impact the tire in some sense, depending on how severe the, the hit is. So we've got an algorithm which is taking into account how many miles you drive, but also how you've driven. Have you driven on smooth surfaces? Have you driven on rough surfaces? All of this will then help us calculate better what's the health of the tire. Let's look wider. Yeah. Why are you doing it? Connected cars have everything connected today, right? They're coming out and everything is connected. Everything has a sensor, everything is connected. The only part that isn't connected is the tire for now. And um, the tire is the only part that touches the road. So for us, it's really important to um, keep in mind that this is the only part that keeps you on the road. People that are familiar with the automotive industry will say, oh yeah, tire intelligence, that's nothing new. And that's true, it's nothing new. The real thing that is new and that is really um, core for our company is to democratize tire intelligence, make it available for all the segments, for a wide range of segments, um, and not only to niche markets. To pomeni ne samo za profesionalce, recimo za tovornjakarje ali pa vlastnike velikih flot, tudi na privatnih vožnjah lahko takšni novi senzori naredijo razliko. Za avtomobilsko industrijo se veda najbolj pomembno, da bumarska industrija te svoje podatke avtomobilu preda na nek urejen, standarden način. No in nekaj teh standardov dejansko že obstaja. Recimo RFID tehnologija, to je ob standard, ki je že posem uveljavljen recimo pri dirkalnih gumah in pa gumah za recimo tovornjake, ampak Gumari so se pa dogovorili tudi o novem standardu, o novih pravilih glede senzorjev, ki dajajo avtomobilom podatke. Pregudir je pravijo, da bo prvi avtomobil, ki bo znal brati podatke tega senzorja, na trge pripeljal po leti, leta 2023. Pravi je, da bo to šlo za eno tako zelo napredno podjetje. Noče jo pa povedati, za katero znam, ko bo šlo. S poletjem 2023 povezani novi senzori v gumah pa so vsekakor bistveno bliže kot pa gume, v katerih ni zraka. Kakšna je bila izkušnja vožnja s Tesla na takšnih brezzračnih gumah, no to izveste s vašim naslednjim klikom.